Ancient Rome certainly has a well-documented history, and they're one of the greatest empires that ever existed. However, there are quite a few strange cultural practices and unsolved mysteries that many people still wonder about. From the legend of brutal female gladiators to Nero burning down Rome, here are nine biggest mysteries of ancient Rome. Number 9. Romulus and Ramus The origins of the beginning of ancient Rome seem to be shrouded in mystery, but it seems to be well documented that Romulus and Ramus are the founders of this great ancient city. It's commonly portrayed in artwork and was a divine tale to how the empire began. It's difficult to tell how much of the story is true and how much of it is mythology. The story goes that Romulus and Ramus were twin brothers that were born in 750 BC at Alba Longa, located near the future site of Rome. They were the sons of a daughter of a former king, and the current king here ordered them to be left on the banks of the Tiber River because he saw them as a threat to his power on the throne. As the story goes, the brothers were actually raised by wolves and managed to survive the whole ordeal. This is why you see so many statues of them in Rome, sucking on the teat of what's known as the Capitoline Wolf. Although the whole part about the founders of Rome being cared for by a she-wolf might seem a little bit crazy, many scholars still debate if there's any truth behind this mysterious legend. Romulus named the city after himself, and the foundations for a great empire were set. A well-respected archaeologist, Andrea Caradini, still believes that Romulus and Ramus are indeed historical figures, while others believe they are only a legend. Number 8. The Lost Roman Legion is it possible that some Romans were caught off their normal path and ended up all the way into the Gobi Desert? A popular mysterious legend recently began to spread that after the Parthians from Mesopotamia and Persia defeated General Crassus' army, a band of about 100 Roman prisoners of war escaped and were captured by the Han military 17 years later. A Chinese historian by the name of Ban Gu recorded an account about a strange encounter with what seems to be Roman soldiers fighting in what's known as a fish scale formation. This fighting formation was unheard of outside the Roman Empire. The Han Dynasty ruled much of modern day Mongolia and present day China, and they knew a little bit about the Roman Empire. Some believe that the Romans made contact with the inhabitants of Lycaon, which is located in the province of Gansu, China. The link between these vastly separated civilizations was first suggested by a professor of Chinese history at the well-respected Oxford University. What's also mysterious about this area is the Caucasian DNA and physical characteristics of the inhabitants, such as blonde hair and green eyes like you see in this collage of inhabitants in this area. There hasn't been sufficient evidence to leak them without a doubt to the ancient Romans, but the physical features of these people still remain a mystery. Number 7. Dodecahedrons Dodecahedrons are small metal objects that date back to the 2nd or 3rd century AD, and many of these strange things have been found in the former territories of the Roman Empire. No one can really figure out exactly what they were used for. Its strange design even makes some people wonder if it had extraterrestrial origins. About 100 of these have been discovered in places like the UK, Hungary, Germany, and France. They tend to be made of bronze, but the true mystery is its purpose. New theories seem to pop up all the time. Explanations range from candle holders, dice, glove makers, and even astronomical measuring. With such a bizarre range of possible uses, people have tried to prove their theories, and one person even showed how it could be used to make gloves. Which theory do you believe is correct? Number 6. Roman Coins in Japanese Castle this photo here shows one of the mysterious ancient Roman coins that were discovered all the way across the other side of the world at the Katsuren Castle in Okinawa, Japan. This castle here was once the home to a wealthy feudal lord. It was built in the 12th century AD, and precious artifacts from this castle from China have also been discovered. But when the Roman coins got here, many archaeologists were scratching their heads. They came up with 10 bronze and copper coins that dated back from 300 AD to 400 AD. This was the first time researchers came across Roman coins in Japan, and they had to have gone to this castle somehow. Japan was known for their extreme isolation ever since the Portuguese attempted to invade Nagasaki in 1647. They refused to trade with anyone for quite a while up until the Industrial Age. Some believe that these managed to reach Japan under violation of their embargoes during the Middle Ages, but there's just nothing to back it up, and the coins remain a huge mystery. Number 5. Nero's Burning of Rome About two millennia ago, a great fire engulfed Rome that covered much of the city, especially the slums. 
This was ultimately blamed on the crazy emperor at the time, Nero, and it managed to burn about six days. Many claimed that Nero had intentionally started this fire in order to be able to rebuild the great city the way he pleased, and the Senate would have no choice but to comply. Finally, when the fire had subsided, 10 of 14 Roman districts were completely destroyed, as well as the Temple of Jupiter and the Atrium of Vestae. Some believe that this fire was made in order to make room for a lavish palace. Other historians even go as far as saying that Nero was playing his fiddle while he watched Rome burn from a distance. The famous arsonist blamed the Christians for the fire, who he seemed to not like much anyways. The historian who recorded Nero's pyromania, however, known as Tacitus, was still a very young teenager at that time and was probably no older than 13 or 14. Other sources claim that Nero was hiding out at his resort in Antium during the fire, which almost seemed to make him seem more guilty. While there is great physical evidence to support that the fire did indeed take place, is there any way to be 100% sure that Nero caused one of the greatest tragedies in the ancient world? And if it wasn't Nero, who or what started it? Number 4. Mysteries of Locusta Locusta was a legendary female assassin and one of the first documented female serial killers in history. Originally being born in the province of Gaul, which is in modern-day France now, she was actually hired by Agrippa the Younger, the mother of Nero, to poison discreetly several members of the imperial family. After spending several years of her life in the Gaul countryside, she learned quite a bit about different plants that could be lethal and even have it appear as a natural death. In order for Nero to make it to the throne, Agrippina needed her husband, Emperor Claudius, out of the way. Locusta was successful after collecting poisonous mushrooms and the 16-year-old Nero would eventually become the new emperor. It's believed that this female assassin went on to complete missions for Nero himself and she would swiftly remove anyone who opposed Nero and his rule. Some believe that Locusta became thrilled with her toxic practice and began just poisoning for fun or to people who she didn't like personally. Once Nero's rule was over, his successor, Emperor Galba, sentenced her to capital punishment and he really didn't want someone who was so sly with poison around him. The exact number of victims Locusta is responsible for still remains a mystery, especially since she was so skilled in making someone's demise seem natural. Number 3. Female Gladiators Gladiators certainly played a big role in Roman entertainment in all the corners of the empire. But was it only the men who fought these battles? Or did women participate in the bloodshed as well? Archaeologists in 2010 discovered the remains of a massive muscular Amazonian type woman who could have possibly been used as a gladiator in occupied parts of Britain. She was buried in an elaborate wooden coffin near the town of Kenchester, which leads them to believe that she was indeed a gladiator. When they further examined her skeleton, they determined that the muscle attachments that she would have had would have been quite intimidating. Imagine being in the arena with a legendary female gladiator, much more muscular than you. This statue here was found two years later and depicts a topless female gladiator in a victorious pose. Some would believe that this is evidence of these claims. This discovery has helped historians learn more about Roman occupation in Britain and about the gladiators who fought her. She would have been a pretty big deal if she was indeed a gladiator and she would have received some Ronda Rousey type status for dedication and training. Number 2. Caligula's Insanity in just a 1,400-day reign as emperor, Caligula would prove to be one of the most insane emperors the world will ever know. He ruled the strongest empire with an iron fist and has been described as being sadistic, cruel, ruthless, evil, and all the names you can think of. You could really go on all day about the wacky things he did, like declaring war on Neptune, but it's the source of his insanity that's been the biggest mystery for psychologists and historians alike. Was he born into a life of nefarious evil, or was he just someone who didn't know how to properly handle his power? Stories about sleeping with his sisters, declaring himself a god, practicing grimacing in the mirror, declaring a horse a priest of a temple, throwing spectators into the arena with lions, and a whole bunch of crazy stuff. People had hoped Caligula, the grandson of Augustus, would be a better ruler than Tiberius. Tiberius was another ruler who was extremely brutal towards Caligula's family. His brother and his mother both starved to death while being in prison. Everyone eventually got fed up with Caligula's shenanigans when he finally took the throne and eventually he was assassinated and even his own wife took a stab. Historians recently are claiming that he was truly mentally ill and in modern times he would have been diagnosed with something like schizophrenia or hyperthyroidism. And number 1. The Fall of the Roman Empire 
So we all know the story. Attila the Hun and the Barbarians swoop into Rome, the most technologically advanced nation at that time, and get defeated by hordes of guys who need showers on horseback. Rome was too focused on orgies, wine, and assassinating each other to figure out how to repel a massive invasion, right? It's one of the most dramatic stories in history, but could there have been other factors to blame that we haven't looked into just yet? Instead of the empire completely falling, it broke into Western and Eastern Rome, but the West would quickly break off into different pieces, and the East would stay strong. Scientists, and especially geologists, are beginning to explore the possibility that volcanoes played a bigger role in bringing down the empire than we once thought. Italy is certainly chock full of volcanoes getting ready to go off at any moment, and we saw what Mount Vesuvius was capable of doing. The soot and ash from the volcanoes could have certainly destroyed a large amount of crops that would have essentially crippled the Roman army. The Huns could have certainly swooped in at a time when Rome was already devastated and plundered the capital with ease. Historians in 536 AD recorded how the sky essentially turned black from thick dust which blocked out the sun. Anyways, it's a new theory that's being investigated and it could shed some light on the collapse of the Roman Empire.